so you're at that point where uh, there's this an awareness that like this is a structural problem. This isn't just me. What what do people do like ta- like tangibly speaking? Like um, it is uh, is there is there value in electing the closest uh, to the sort of like you know uh, or, or the the person who espouses. Uh, m- more than the other person of these sort of like socialistic policies? Wh- wh- how do we proceed in a sort of like a, a tangible way? I think that that can be a slippery slope. So I steer clear of electioneering in the book. I think that there is power in mass movement and mass organization where you're enabling people to find a community who can then put demands and strategize together about what they want to do moving forward. I think, of course, all of this uh, is impacted by policy. Policy creates a lot of these problems, but directly trying to figure out who's, you know, the lesser of two evils, this is where it's brought us. So I focus on people joining something. If you've got a union, union, you know, join that. If you need to have one, union up. There are, for instance, with the Debt Collective, as I mentioned, it's a debtor's union. So they do advocacy work and they're also working to give people, you know, tangible results so that they can uh, combat the student loan debt that they personally have. So that's that's considered they consider that a debtor's union. Join an organization. I think capitalism does a really great job, again, of isolating us and making us think these are all of our individual problems and our individual failings. But when you are with in concert with other people, it eases some of that burden and it also empowers you to fight. So joining, you just, you've got to join something. I think that's a, that's a very easy step. And there are so many groups right now that are getting involved in a lot of different kinds of work that you can find, you know, if there's anything you care about, the climate, if you care about student loans, if you care about, you know, having health care, a lot of them lean left. And so there are so many ways that you can move forward through an organization. And then what follows that? I mean, it just, uh, 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 the, the, um, we seed that to the organizations in terms of like, um, uh, rallying for certain issues. Are they, um, uh, is it on an issue by issue basis or, um, are we looking for more sort of like broader, I guess, all in uh, type of reform or, uh, you know, change? I I think all of the above. So if we just look at, as one example, the Black Panther Party, they weren't just a community-based organization. They also had a political and philosophical project that they were working on, right? And they also made sure to have services for the community because you can't just go around with all this theory and then people are like okay well how are you actually going to help me in my day-to-day life and you have nothing to offer them so i think those kinds of organizations are important where you're able to think about the the a lot the ideological underpinnings i think that's so crucial but you're also doing some work so the black panther party decided at at one point that they were going to be involved in politics. So I don't think it necessarily means rallying around a particular candidate, though it could be if that, you know, this is all democratic. Socialism is about democracy. So if that's what people decide, then that's what they decide. But I think just looking at the patterns of how some of these groups have worked, elect your own candidates, figure out how those political processes work, decide, okay, do you want to be on the democratic ballot? Do you want to be independent? See what works in that particular group that you're in. I have been involved in an organization called Operation Power. We do all the, you know, hoity-toity, you know, book readings and uh, political education, but we also elect officials who are socialist and or radical or progressive in some way. And so we have to understand what does uh, gathering petitions look like? Going to the train stations, getting people to get your candidate on the ballot and then saying, okay, well, which party should they be on? What do people respond to in this community? And we could get, you know, as nitty gritty as you want to. <laughs> we could get nitty gritty, you know what I mean? Um, it is about coming up with a platform and then saying, okay, who exactly are we going to be choosing for this? Or are we going to abstain from this particular election? So you can elect candidates and you can also figure out a strategy for people who align with your agenda and, and uh, endorsing certain candidates. But I do think 
that political piece is important, like getting involved in politics in some way, even though I'm not, you know, promoting, endorsing any particular party. I, I remember a piece that you wrote that uh, really stuck with me, obviously, you know, I think it was back in like 2017 about uh, in Milwaukee, I think it was, uh, looking at um, black voters who had stayed home in the 2016 election. Um, I can't remember where it the current affairs current, was in current yeah. affairs. OK, oh, nice. And um, and uh, and 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 I wonder, like, you know, what. W- give me your sense of how you reach folks like that and convince them that engaging has any value uh, because there is a sense that like sort of, and I think it, it, it's not uh, specific, um, you know, to uh, a black communities in, in Milwaukee. I mean, I think this is the case I, I remember years ago, uh, during the Bush years, you know, seeing a documentary where, you know, somebody was talking about how like the Walmart is destroying all the things. And somebody said, well, you know, why don't you get involved with this? It's like, what, you know, what does politics got to do with this? I mean, um, the, you know, and this was in a rural area, uh, with some, you know, uh, a rural wh- wh- white folk. I mean, how do you convince people who feel like, there is no point to engaging in any of this, um, regardless of whether it's electoral politics or for that matter, like organizing around a union for that matter. And I think certainly the, the union stuff is like, you know, picked up steam because you can't avoid sort of seeing how empowered it is. But what is what like what is the um, what, what what's the mechanism to to get people to to see that their actions can have uh, some impact? Uh, That's a great question. And I think part of it is not putting that responsibility on people to feel like everything that they get involved in has to have an impact. But I think they need to see somebody aligning with them, making an impact. So if, again, we go back to the Black Panther Party, that didn't start off with some real deep ideological, you know, analysis of of the lumpen proletariat. There were community folks who said, we need a stop sign because too many kids are getting run over on this block. And they put a homemade stop sign up there and eventually the city came around. And so once people observe that the folks who are involved are making a difference, I think you inspire people to get involved. Um, There are some people who are, who may not ever care. There are some people who are too tired. We're working three and two, three, four jobs. People have side hustles. They're told they need to be working all these jobs in order to make a living. You know, and so I don't think the onus should be on every single person to have to pick up, you know, the mantle and do something. Um, but I do think you can win people over to at least say, hey, let me check out a meeting because I know that this group is doing something and I'm seeing the results of that. And that doesn't necessarily have to be, like you said, it doesn't have to be an electoral win. It could just be something for the community. We've been trying to get speed bumps in this this neighborhood for so long. Who's doing something about it? And people will complain. And then you'll have the few at the Vanguard who are like, okay, we actually want to do something about it. It's like, okay, let me rock with you, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So you'll you'll win people over even if everyone's not going to be deeply involved in the movement. That's just not how movements have worked but you'll at least get people to align and support. And they might go to, you know, the the polls if they see one of your candidates is doing something. Um, I know this too, how just to take it out of the U.S. context for a bit, that you you, you do try to make, you know, your case uh, uh, to take uh, take it to a global scale, right? I mean, you, you uh, center uh, or you open your second chapter talking uh, about Ava Morales or has a quote from him in there, um, if, I've, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, why was that so important for you to, to make that case um, and not keep it confined to domestic politics in the U.S.? Well, I started off wanting to do more um, internationally, but I also know, I hate to say it like this, but a lot of us only care about what's happening within our borders, <laughs> you know, like... We can be a little bit ignorant and we don't really see the connections abroad. Um, but I think there are good examples 
outside of the U.S. context and not just for um, looking at capitalism's failures, but looking at worker movements, looking at um, how people have had fundamentally different values than Western ones. Like the U.S. is based on individualism. That's a Western and European ideal. But there are some communities who have thought about communal values for eons. You know, in Bolivia, part of their constitution is based on this idea of collectivism. In a lot of West, uh, West African countries, African countries really all over, they believe in collectivism. And so I think it allows us to step outside of this trope that it's human nature to be selfish. It's human nature to only want to look out for yourself. Of course, capitalism works because it's a reflection of how we all are. Capitalism works because it has, in large part, killed off opposition. It works because it has propagandized us out of alternatives. It has focused so much on the fact that this is an innate idea that's natural and works instead of something that is built on exploitation and clear policy, distinct policy that has kept us thinking this way. And so when you look outside of this Western bubble, you realize that everybody didn't do it, isn't doing this way, and they haven't always done it this way.